thermal crickets. Getting a little bit warmer. Actually, it's going to get a little bit warmer for me. If I drop out, I have a problem. Just um, go after the archive. I'll be continue to broadcast to myself. I've got the recorder running. But i just let you know, I might may not make it today. The heat temperature is coming up too fast, I think. But we'll see. Maybe we'll make it just enough. You're listening to BTW RLM 327. 327 for those of you on all the aftercasts. So you can get the, the links if you want. Things I talk to, talk about. Just give you a start on a potential interest that you may have. I can only hope that you do that. that this week was really a kind of a, really a double-edged sword week relative to making accomplishments and also seeing things that didn't <laughs> always a lot of work folks i mean i, I finally re, i just you have to just come to terms and when you start getting into all this you'll you'll realize the society is is really nuts completely out of it doesn't understand a thing and as i tell you the microcosm of the minor is the macrocosm of america where people want to rely on other on everyone else but themselves to resolve things and they get led down the primrose path and to really get waylaid pretty fast and uh, these people that are out there are out there for decades and decades so again when i, I really appreciate when they said that your freedom and liberty what you think would for us in america what that was took vigilance in an educated populace I, I can't agree more i see the failure all the time and i'm not Again, this is not my opinion. If anybody listens to me and thinks I'm talking opinion, you're not listening to me. Everywhere that I talk about, everything I talk about relative to taking action or where the authorities are, that we have the objective basis I call the authority so that we all can live amongst each other, the black and white tells us how we have to do it. All we have to go is read it. Now, okay, they made it, they hit it just a little bit. You got to go know where to go read. And yes, I've doing, been doing this for quite a bit of time. I've read quite a bit of it. So I already know a lot of times where to go look. That doesn't mean you can't jump in and figure this out. But these are not questions. Everything you see going against you today is because there's an unaccountability and a violation. And the other side that promotes the, the dumbness of it all the insanity, the unreality, is doing so contrary to an objective basis that was supposed to be kept. And when you, when we all stop to engage that, they kept coming and kept coming and kept coming and it took us down. They keep taking us down. Anyway, this week was an interesting set of experiences, uh, uh, certainly one where uh, it just reminds me, this is a war and it takes a continually reassessment of what's going on. And part of that is uh, we do the behind the woodshed. We try to try to do the similar, not too much. I don't do it so focused, but the technological things that doesn't give out information that they're using to track us. The silent weapons for quiet wars thing. So last week, I think I was, I think it was last week, I talked about uh, DNS over HTTPS as a Mozilla project, giving us the opportunity to uh, secure uh, encrypt. Our connection to a DNS server, which is how we get around the internet, and uh, right at the next week, UK ISPs vilify Mozilla for trying to secure the internet. Now, there's an association uh, of ISPs that's dealing in the UK relative to this, and uh, that focused my mind. That again, this uh, lots of associations are made around corporate or legal interests that people hand their their authority over to, and this is part of how this uh, get, how the defeat starts. In fact, that's one of the things that I've been talking to my colleagues. Even though we went, the work that I do with my colleagues went national, acknowledged in the, in the news. What they people do with that information is problematic, and they hand over people locally hand over their authority to a national thing, and the national thing doesn't even understand what's going on. They affect what they want. They lobby for what they want, not what really is needed. And so there's always this dual-edged sword about what's going on when I talk to you. And I really can't even speak to that. I just tell you, jump in and you'll start seeing. This is a, we're in a serious way. But those of you that think you can hand it over or not do anything, you're never going to know what I'm saying. So at any rate, the uh, government doesn't like that these uh, this DNS over HTTPS actually does encrypt that. Uh, the associations for ISPs, which are beholden apparently to the government, jumped out and jumped on Mozilla, 
and made a, an accusation, vilified Mozilla, when in fact what Mozilla is, is not doing anything like what the government angle would say, which means this is hiding terrorism and, uh, again, the, the child porn, all this other excuses to make a viable argument that you need to not be encrypted. Now, I have a, it could be ignorance, but I have a feeling, I have a, I have a dislike, I don't know how she would do the internet set up like this, so I don't know how you get around it, but I'm not so sure I like the DNS you, all, you have to go through the D, a DNS server somewhere that someone can control. And so I'm not so sure about this part, but at least in the surface of it, it's encrypted. And uh, that might be a, at least a protection. The point is being encrypted that outside influences can't look in. And so, again, now when the government steps up, now you've got these legal entities inside the uh, U.K. jumping up to jump on a company that's just giving you the option to be sec more secure. Strictly digital encryption is really all it is however secure that ends up being versus uh, someone who wants to get at you, it's much more secure than not doing it. And again, as we look at how the world is working, and certainly since the murder memo, that was the memo in 2010 where they, they deemed everyone in, uh, officially in the open. If you didn't know it by 9-11, in the, in the PATIRO Act, uh, IOT Act, the Patriot Act they call it, uh, you you missed that, uh, that we all went to enemy combatant status. Uh, th they walked into that. Remember, if you committed a misdemeanor in, after that time, you were then considered that. But now they've re removed any action. Now everything's punitive. Just what the Tim's case says you can't happen is happening. And well, how can that? How can you have such a big disconnect? Because in the murder memo, it said that the executive branch does not exist within the structure of the establishment anymore. It's, it, it, booted, it booted the judiciary to the curb. And it uh, doesn't really care what Congress says anymore because Congress gave him the permission. We're really dealing underneath the license that Lincoln, uh, another lawyer, gave uh, himself. And the Bar Association then, through the, the lawyers and the judgments, gave themselves to continue this this um, open-air prison, essentially. If people don't understand this. They, they, I mean, you might even repeat it. Yeah, it looks like it. I, I'm To me, that's not enough. You need to go in and figure out how it all works like that because... In being in a prison, you got to break. There's got to be a breakout at some point, or you're just another prisoner. And you can talk about being free, and you can talk about utopia, but it's just you making up fairy tales in your mind while you're in a prison cell that you really don't really realize is sitting there. But no, you're not free to move about the country. Is I guess the point on that. And so no one stepped up about that. So DN so virtually the silo weapons quiet war is DNS over HTS is uh, HTTPS is getting heat and flack and from legal entities. So here we have, for me, I looked at this as, okay, here's a little lesson for you all. Uh, these legal entities, the lobbying entities, it's all politics, and they're not, they're all in favor of the government because that's how they get, that's how this thing works. And so, not, I don't want to really underwrite this, but it's better than not doing it. So, if you were looking to see who's interested uh, in the subtle protection that that offered, uh, there's there's a first sign. Uh, it, not even a week after the, it came news, and it's not even a, a thing. It's just a it's a test that they're doing. See, so this is how interesting it seems to me. But anyway, I look inside. The, what's the dynamic? Who are the players? Who's coming out to defend what? And that informs me, and I attach all that stuff where it seems to be consistent around the world. And I attach that in, and I put that into my um, my my calculus, if you will, when I'm looking at a situation. That's the this is the players in the these are the, uh, the the players in the war against us. A lot of people don't want to be bothered with it. A lot of people would rather hand them <laughs> hand their rights and their property and all this stuff to other people. It's phenomenal. It's not going to work that way, but it's it's really phenomenal. I've been advocating that you. It sounds kind of dumb. Again, it's all the stuff we shouldn't have to be bothered with. And this is a main the main crux for me. So why are we even bothered with this stuff? And I now have an understanding of how that wasn't supposed to happen. But since it went off the, the rails, it went off the road, the road it was supposed to be traveling, this thing, uh, we, we have work to do. And if you don't get in and do the work, it's going to continue to go bailing on over the edge and continue going down into the stinking abyss as, they, as these people continually get in and, and force this... Uh, this crate down over the side. Uh, but I've said that you're going to have to, it's coming to a time, you have to take even the most simplest things that are already there and make them actually law so that it's protected because you've got people inside the system like the political parties of the bar, 
of uh, the, the political parties of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, uh, which are likely bar members, which is another party. And I'm only referring to, not my opinion, the fact that they defaulted our lawsuit 2013. I'll take their word for it in their default. What that meant. These people are in control of your life. And you will have to make, because they're in control and in the seats of decision and this thing called the government that everyone believes has author, actual authority, they're going to make rules that going to be, they're going to bring you into the global austerity and other and, and the, the sustainable debt and all that other nonsense. And right, and your your la, your life will be taxed. Everything you do will be. You'll have to pay for something in extreme forms. And, and without getting too far afield, they're starting to. You, you're watching this happen with the P, PPG, PPG&E in California. Uh, and I talked about it. I said, do they, does the pg e really want to say they haven't been doing maintenance even though they've been receiving fees for that, for the payments for that? And they told the bankruptcy court that. That was a setup, folks. I don't know if you see how this works. That was a setup for the law legislators to go and get leverage funding to pay for all that. And they did. They're coming right down to do this. This is how this works. This is a private, public, private partnership now. They didn't get caught. pg e doesn't get caught for it's it's causing the fires. It now turns to the rate payers. Now, okay, you say rate payers, and everyone's in electricity. Well, that is wherever you're going to be subjecting yourself to a fee or a, a potential fine or some kind of a tax, that is the source of the leverage funding which goes to these corporations which feed off of society and all of its characters and all of its needs. And so we see... Again, if you don't have a law against it, these people just make a law that allows them. That's not the way it's supposed to work. But when I told you that the United States is an established thing has ended, for sure, in 20, 2012, when, when I reported on it, if no one had read it before, this is not a joke. If we don't see the accountability, this is not a joke. This is not also not supposed to happen. But we keep letting it, and our complaints, our just bare complaints aren't going to be enough. So here we have another rule along the lines I've been telling you. It's coming, uh, what I've been saying. And I only say this to say, I mean, try and encourage more more utility to it. Not that I like that it needs to be done, but it needs to be done. It, and that's the problem. It needs to be done. It shouldn't. And the need is the problem. The necessity is always the thing. It's always look at necessity. It's very interesting how that can give you a bunch of, uh, a bunch of authority within the context of a, of a power that doesn't want to see it. But. Uh, signed as law, North Carolina expands the right to try act, rejects some FDA restrictions. This come on, and I found this interesting on the title is that people are now putting in their titles who they're from, the Tenth Amendment Center. So I wanted to call your attention to the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution, notwithstanding the fact that the system inside doesn't recognize the establishment. The establishment that is supposed to be is in each one of you and for you to assert. And I, I figured that out when I, we started doing I finally figured that out for myself and what we were doing. And I said, I will not allow these people for uh, just to, because they come by no law, I will not let them get win the day without count, countering. And the law is in whatever one I put forward. And I got that from judges who, if you listen, they'll tell you, well, you only get the rights you assert. So all the laws were, all the things and rights we're losing are the ones we aren't asserting, in, and I say in the proper way, because there's mechanisms for how you do that. The Tenth Amendment said, in the failed establishments, anyone who steps up with the authority to do so, which would be a governmental a state or county, under the Tenth Amendment, has the right to come forward and assert what they need. When they don't, or they do it improperly, it doesn't, it won't work. And so you have to have an understanding, all these constitutionalists, you have to understand how this works. And I can't tell you how much of an appreciation I got of how exactly this thing works until I saw what coordination does, and that's under public land law through 43 U.S.C. 1712, I think it is. And then you go look, look at that, and you go, Jefferson Mining District, that's part of the the reason why we were reestablished. We re reestablished the mining district was that was not a need, for, was not a f fulfilled for the miner, for the property owner, for the uh, a government. And, uh, and miners have a government. And it's before a lot of these other governments, which is really an interesting co concepting relative to the authority that a mining district can bring. It's a very narrow place, but it's still within that place. It's very, it's, it's at least equal in power to this 10th Amendment as well. And, and it has on top of it these grants. So I tell you the patent, the 
patent disposal evidence is important in this regard for everybody, not just minors. It all comes out of that same uh, same law authority. It was signed into law that right to try. This had to do with being able to try things. And they, the condition was once you are in terminal uh, condition and you have the right to go try all kinds of things to save yourself, essentially, regardless of what the FDA says. Now, I'm saying this ahead of time of any challenge that the federal government may, may do. But you, remember, you always have that non-commercial thing as well going on. That you have to say that you have the right to try things to save yourself should put a question in your mind about who owns you. Well, I don't care what your thinking is. You need to think about why this has to be put in there. And you have to understand what's being violated. And the only way I can tell, tell you about that is to look at what I've been talking to you about, about the chasm between production, men and women in production, and where they went to commerce. As I'm talking with my colleagues and we're trying to figure out how to uh, educate people about uh, making analogies, uh, it's hard to make some of these analogies when people are not open to receive them or just their eyes roll back or whatever. At any, any rate, I've moved over a little bit just to kind of hit the economic specter, if you will, to try and give examples. And I've mentioned it here on the broadcast here just recently about the primary economy, the secondary economy, and the tertiary economy. The primary economy is where all your, uh, where all your raw, per, uh, raw materials producers are. It's what the society is, the primary part of society. If you take that out, you kill a country. That's why it's a war crime when you go after all the raw materials or those people that do. And even the law of war that I talked to you in the Lieber Code uh, that was created by, uh, by Lee, uh, Francis Lieber, it mentions the fact, and they learned this from the Romans, the Romans, so don't, don't destroy your productive base. It feeds you, even your army, even in an occupation. So there's certain realities about how bad you can be against a group of people somewhere. Uh, that that you, you So this FDA restrictions is in commerce, folks. So remember how to look at this, and you can bring the power counter if you know. Most people don't know, and so I don't say that they're even doing this correctly, but people are fed up with the fact that they are put onto these regimes that are in, under license, and they aren't enough, and yet they're denied to go save themselves. And I have to again say, it just keeps coming to my mind, who then owns you actually? And when and when you got to start doing the basics of your, you have to protect in law the basics of your society, which are already actually protected if you knew where to go look, but no one wants to recognize it that way. No, they listen to attorneys that put you through administrative procedures that are not applicable. Every I see this everywhere, folks. It's pretty interesting how simple we can get to the point. But they, okay, so we have to go the hard way, it's the, the long way. Uh, we'll have to make a law that says I have a right in the state. I have a right to re, to go ahead and try things that might save me. And you also see the presumption of a commercial reality over your life. That's not being free either. And I, I'm suggesting to you strongly to look at this production side because if there's a chasm that's supposed to be between. The fact that there's not a chasm means that your primary and organic establishment is gone. And it has been gone, I guess, in that regard for a long, long time. And anyway, so here we are. A law, a state says we're going to let you, our, my, my, our, our citizens, so-called, our residents. See, this is the other problem. There's lots of terms that come in here uh, that are really not proper either. And then you can distance yourself from that if you understand more of what I've been saying. But the point here is that you have to make a law that gives you the right to try. It, it blew me away that they're actually because of the way they've abused copyright and abused. Uh, patent, uh, intellectual law, pa intellectual property patents, and uh, licensing, and that thing within the, I guess, the digital arena, they've abused all that. We actually have to have a right to repair law. That's totally foreign to my mind, completely. And it's certainly, after I learned a bit about the law, it's certainly foreign to that law as well, but that's what their attorneys push in order to give the corporation advantage. And none of us speak back. I mean, this is the given to the point in time. You buy like a John Deere tractor, you'd be lucky to get it fixed when it breaks. And then when you get to give it fixed, you're into the planned obsolescence. We're just being told something about GPS systems that track the tractor around and it tells the tractor where to go. Those things break. They're tens of thousands of dollars to fix a GPS system on a on a tractor, and you can't fix it. They're, they're obsoleted. If they they have to you have to buy a new system. And so you don't have the really right to to fix either. Apple does the same thing. And so it's all improper, but no one steps up. No one actually does it. So the best way to head them off at the pass, if you will, as I've seen, is you need to make local laws. And then you have to make sure that the local law that does this is legitimate within its authority to do so. In this state, as I said, this could still come under challenge. But if they understand that they're talking about people that where the commerce system and the license system doesn't fulfill what it said it would do, 
That's the way you have the authority. They have nothing to say, actually. It's how the authority of these laws will work, that you really have to step up and start. Uh, I know people hate hearing this, but you're going to have to lobby your own representative to get these these reality laws placed in to protect you. And as I said, that of protecting you against the enforcement of all this stuff. In fact, it just came up. I may have had a friend of mine become the first casualty of the work that we do against the, this fire, the, the public land fires. These people, enforcement is like this brute, this animal. It doesn't matter what you do. All the time, for some reason, they were enforcing the ability to burn, to burn the forests out. That was fine because it seemed to be a federal policy, and everyone believed that. And then now we've got it to work that people say, "Oh, well, we don't have to have. We don't need to do that." Well, they, now law enforcement goes from protecting from before letting the fires burn because if someone said it was okay to burn a place down, it was okay to see a paradise. And then uh, we come along and we say, wait a minute, we've got to adjust that. And the pendulum swings, but it swings all the way the other way. Now anybody who's working at all during during the time that a local fire uh, season, uh, fire uh, time, um, a, non, a stop work time, is, you, you'll get attacked. And so we just saw that. There's no middle ground with this enforcement. Now. There's no rationale behind what, who gets, someone's going to get attacked no matter what position is our problem as well. Now, it ends up, I mean, my, like my friend got attacked, but they did it wrong. It, and he knew, he knows the stuff that I tell you. He, So, they really stepped in it. Now, I don't want to see that on my friend, but the point is, is that we're, we're, in a, we're a society that doesn't know what reason is anymore. And I, I tell you, when I tell you, here's what I, where I tell you that. I have to be careful what I tell you all, because you're, you're like, not anyone in particular, but in general, you're like me handing a loaded gun to a little kid, little goat, and you're going to shoot yourself with it. Or you're going to shoot the cat. You, you're, you're not going to really understand we're absent, what we're supposed to be understanding, and how we're supposed to implement it. And I see this over and over. But anyway, so here's a, this law. You have to be very cognizant of what you're doing with it, and you have to now give yourself the right in the law in order to do normal things, because insanity has come upon us. And apparently last week, not many people were interested in how to avoid it, as I was talking about it. So, I mean, this is the thing about our society, too. There are just not many people interested to take this, this insanity by the, or by the insanity and, 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 and either toss it someplace or, or, or shake it out of people or whatever. I don't even know what we're going to do with this. It's in us. The the major work is in us, actually, before we can start seeing how to make it better in other places. But it's like I'm, uh, I look out, uh, you can't make it a suggestion to anybody. They, it goes from one extreme to the other. There's no moderating thought, but there's no critical thought between the two actions. It, it's really disconcerting a bit. Anyway, so here, another example. Make a law, folks. Get a law that you can do, that you have a right to try. Get a law that you can... Oh, you can use the, well, how about if we just get a law that says they can't confuse, that's a crime to confuse a commerce with a, with a productive right or a right in the land. How about if we start one of those? That'd be cool. But that's the law that we need. And anyway, so, what do I do? Where do I go on this? I don't know what else to say. I looked around, I, my mind actually went over and said, you know, no one, you hear, but you're not going to, no one moves. No one does the stuff. We, we complain, we keep pressing it. Uh, our complaint out there, we try to inform people, which is admiral, uh, I didn't mean admiralty, it's a good thing, but we we have to go beyond pointing, keep pointing the failures of everything, we have to, so I say, just find one of them that really bugs you and, and work hard to figure out how to how to make it uh, make it better, if not, if not right, better, and so it's, uh, court upholds conviction of a cop who threatened uh, beat, tased, and arrested a man for complaining about being beaten by him earlier. This, again, was indicative of what I've been telling you. It's uh, from, uh, this must be from Detector. Yeah, because it's from the, this is how far an officer has to go to lose everything department. Why did that catch my eye? Because I've been telling you about the Libra Code for years, and I've been telling you that is lo the whole protection of these soldiers, uh, or call, you look think are officers, are soldiers, is to protect the security of the system that oppresses you. And that's the, the, the only thing time you're going to get these guys is when they violate every conceivable thought beyond their ability to defend against it. It's gotten so bad that you're now hearing stories that cops can 
a, a woman will go to a cop uh, complain, or making direct a complaint about a rape, and the cop will rape them. And that's quite fine, apparently, in some states. So you have to make a law against it, folks. I keep telling you, this is how stupid it's gotten, but this is where we are. We live in stupid. And I just told my guy, I can't keep up with this much stupid. And so we're reassess I'm reassessing what do I do in this amount of stupid. I, 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 it overwhelms. I said we our line on the on one thing we were working on this week. Our our defensive lines on this have been run over. We can't def we can't continue to do this kind of a battle. We have to take a step back and reposition ourselves. There's that much stupid in the world. This is just what, and I'm just talking relative to being able to read a black and white statement and have 99% of the people violated and think that they're doing good. And have other people, maybe the .999 rest, uh, agree with, the, with the, the promotion. And so here we are, look, here, my colleagues and I look and witness this nonsense that's going on, and no one's there to hear how it's simply, and all this stuff is answered, simply already written down, and we're going to go down the wrong, everyone's going down the wrong trail again. If you go down over there, they, people don't want to hear that. It's this mass migration of dumb, the stupid, S-T-O-P-I-D. And I really can't, I don't understand that. It, it, if not, I'm probably never going to understand that. So uh, from this is how far it has to go. You'll hear a story about how far a cop went to fabricate a condition. We, we've heard these stories before, but my point on all this is to point out, here's a story, you want to get it, uh, get the link of it, and read it, and you're going to see what it takes before a cop can get charged. Why is that important? Because that's how you respond in your investigative reporter style. If they're going to go that against you, you have to develop this level of harm. And what causes this to even come here is the guy who got violated never gave up However oppressed he became and however the system came together to protect the system and the cop, he kept persisting until he was able to get the information out, and it brought it to the surface. In other words, it took one, at least one, to complain. If more of you were in the proper way, we would get rid of a lot of this stuff. In fact, they'd have to start making laws. And I've been saying, just go in now. Take this also. For those of you that are concerned about the cops getting, you know, over aggressive and you can't control it. Take this list and make a, you know you start with a policy with the sheriff or the city cops or what, whoever, and you say these things done like this are remove qualified immunity immediately on its face. We won't tolerate it, and then you give a, a, a consequence for it. And I won't go through again. We can talk about this. It was simply a traffic stop made up by a cop who never saw the crime. Also, so for those of you that are understanding about how that works uh, this is what happens this is they, they fabricate an idea they have to witness you doing the crime not go on someone's suggestion all right and then it has to be legitimate and so uh, this guy this guy who got gets in trouble and they uh, tech dirt's kind of interesting some of this insight's pretty good he actually puts the word civilian in quotes as i've told you the word civilian is from a military perspective and he talks about the undeniable story of just how much havoc a man with a badge when a bunch of power can wreak on a civilian. And he puts that civilian word in quotes. Exactly, because it's the civilian is this, this military consequence. And if you look through the Libra Code and the Law of War, you see that they can wreak, so-called power can wreak, uh, this kind of so-called power can wreak real havoc. It can kill you now. And you, you're gone at that point for you. Anyway, so I don't know what to say more. I keep saying that I want to just, I can talk and talk, or I can sh just say, okay, you either get this or you don't, and uh, we'll just let the next guy get beat down or killed. But, uh, the point is, this guy said, no, I'm not, uh, uh, Jeffrey L Little Page, if this was the name, he stuck it out. So he sticks out against this oppression. He becomes, uh, now we get to know about it. I say, look at the list of things that happen. You're looking, this is probably a method they train these cops to do. You'll find a great amount of information in bullet pointing these points, and you walk into your jurisdictions, and or if you've been violated, you look for these things, and you start to apply in bullet point form so you don't confuse people. The excesses. In my work, when I see these, I make a list of what, maybe not remember, I don't, uh, it's not a memory thing, I just, it's a subject matter amounts of things that I'm looking at, and I fit 
the subject matter of the violation, the type of violation in my mind, and then I go through it as an investigative reporter in that condition, and I'm asking questions to qualify those things, you see. So then I have a list of qualified points of the violations that bring these guys out of their qualified immunity. I just don't complain about it. This is a condition. You're in a prison. Now what are you going to do? No, you, you'll let you exercise your right of free speech, but that's not going to do nothing. Turn around and become the press, become an investigative reporter, identifying in the moment that this starts to happen, and through the time you're being, you're being dealt with wrongly, start identifying the things that are listed in here that brought these cop, this cop over the edge of his qualified immunity. It insulted the cop, uh, the judge enough to, to be able to state it. You have to know what this is. I don't like having to say this to you. I don't like that we have to do it. But this is the day and age that we are. We live in a prison where the cops have presumption of innocence. You don't. And you have to understand the the, the, the codes, even the statutes, because that's what they live under, uh, enough to be able to pull the elements of their crime out. What have I told you about the color of authority? The color of authority that took away the guy's property and rights, whatever the property is you decide, or he would decide, actually, you know, for you, you would decide, or your rights relative to that property become felonies. Okay, I keep telling you about that. So this is how this starts to develop. So here's an example of how that is for you. To me, this is a just a piece of evidence for me to understand where the system is relative to how it's going to treat me. I don't care about what ought to be. Yeah, I'd long for the day that we lived in the, in peace, but we're not there. So you could bemoan it at all, or you can start to work to defend yourself against it, or help to defend others before it starts to happen to them. Why? Because you care enough to listen behind the woodshed and care just that much to keep listening, and you just maybe don't have a direction, but I'm telling you the directions are out there given you have an interest. It's all about what you want to put an interest in. Yes, there's about a time you got to balance out sometimes to, to do this, but how important is uh, seeing a loved one killed? How important is that, given that could be your next... How about you just being killed? You don't care about yourself that much? You don't care, but... How about the lo your loved one next to you could go out and next thing and meet up a cop like this, and he's a little even worse than this guy. And so, like the cop, the the teacher that finally took the groups of th four teachers got his shot by an airsoft gun. It took one finally third or fourth group that went in. Wait, you can't shoot me with an airsoft gun to teach me how to try to to get enough energy to attack a, a, a terrorist. Uh, that that made it that the first one to complain the correct way. On the correct point, well, it worked. It worked, right? So you have to build the evidence of, of how this works, and you have to build it. When I say proper, this is what I'm talking about. You talk about anything else but the things that they recognize are beyond, and you're talking to the wind. You talk about the things that are not beyond and on point of, that are sufficient to kick somebody out. Now you're dealing in that embarrassment. They either, And then you have this case to, to say, well, this was the standard here. And uh, full faith and credit and equality and justice, why isn't it the same standard here? And why is it even that hard? Why is it that, do I have to wait for that long before I, I get justice? Why wasn't innocence the first part? See, the first part in this story was the guy got a complaint like they do and tracked down someone he, he, he blamed without seeing anything. But he didn't stop there. He's got a system that protects him. So he got worse and worse and worse. And you can read about how that works because you watch a dynamic. I got involved a little bit about this. It wasn't quite this bad when, when they have made up that thing with me over 30-something years ago. Uh, and I started to, I made my complaint to the, they never did it before, folks. So this, and I didn't have instruction like I do now or knowledge or anything. I just didn't like what they did to me. Uh, it, it violated my sense of, of all senses, just of justice, if you will. Uh, I was doing nothing to nobody, and I'm looking at five cops going to shoot me. Well, okay, that develops out. You've heard some of the story. I made my complaints. You've heard that. I've made my complaints to the chief of the police for that city. It took me six months to finally get them to agree. Uh, you know, uh, uh, They agreed that they would uh, stop doing what they were doing to continually harass me to potentially find me in another violation. And so at that time, that's all I knew to do. And when they stopped and it was apparent that they would stop, I, I got what I needed done. And so there's, I know, addressing this in record making, that's how I started to learn about that record and making it right. I started learning what it is they have to respond to and how it is you have to prove it. And if you don't speak it in that way, you can talk to your blue in the face about your so-called constitutional rights. They laugh at them, which should have told you something. Maybe you don't live there no more. Does that mean you can't live there in the future? That's the interesting point, because that's the thing you were supposed to keep. That's why I say the law is in you. 
right? The, the, the thing that we have to do is is in us to maintain. And there's a certain way to do that for as much as I see people. So I don't want to, oh, well, you're talking about agreeing with the system. No, there's a certain way of communicating. It's like I've told you before. You have to see, there's a certain language to speak to these brutes. And I don't know what else more to say about that. So evidence is important. And uh, to me, move agendas forward. Uh, the whole point about it is making a record that gives somebody in a seated decision the plausible, uh, the ability to plausibly find for an, an, uh, an adherent, uh, somebody who claims something. And here, so let me move on about evidence. And then when people go back and look to see where it was, and this is the problem, you can set up a bunch of evidence that's a fraud. I told you that if that fraud makes a record and it's not refuted correctly or exposed, it's a fraud can actually win a case. And that's really what you're seeing in a lot of traffic in a lot of so-called uh, and justice system cases where 98% conviction, it's a big fraud that's moved through that no one knows how to challenge. And there's a, like two ways, there's two avenues to have to challenge in that case. But anyway, without getting too complicated, again, I mean, I could go down the track, but if you're not interested, what for? I mean, what's the point? And on what, on what, on what hype, you start getting the hypotheticals and you're going to walk yourself into a, it doesn't matter. You have to have something real to work with. But to move on to evidence. Oh, here it is in the title. It's <laughs> funny how these things, I didn't miss them, and here they are. Study sees no solid evidence for man-made climate change. Uh, I guarantee you there's, there's evidence for Michael man-made climate change, but here it sees no evidence for climate change. So on top of all this, so this what you think is normal government and, and, and beating down on people and all this rights they give to the soldiers of the uh, called, you think it's the, mili you think it's the uh, cops, you think it's a police officer. Well, it is. It's a policing officer. It's not a peace officer anymore. They'll say that the definition says that, but their actions, look at their actions again. Libra Code says you know them when you see them, folks. When they're not acting underneath the law and bringing peace, and they're making fraud and lies, it's not a peace officer, and you live a place someplace else. You, you go find what that, you find what that, uh, that environment is. But uh, solid evidence, folks. So they bring solid evidence in a presumption uh, relative to things on a global scale here. And all the uh, everyone's now agreeing to all this. Uh, they agree with uh, the parties to it, which are the, again the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, the Bar Association. Worst of all, because that's global. Uh, remember their own documents, the Bar Association's documents. It says that they will, where appropriate, they will promote sustainable development, which is what is the umbrella for climate change. And where you see an offense happening, it takes a ton of evidence to show. Uh, to get a soldier outside of their qualified immunity. Why would they have a qualified immunity anyway is another point. I mean, people miss that as well. We miss we miss the very first question that should be, the very first condition that should be a question in our mind relative to everybody being under the law equally. And when we started to allow a subversion of that, we cannot, I don't see how we can complain that it is where it is. And all I know is that if we don't like it, we're going to have to step up to do our part uh, to stop it. Yeah, but uh, no I have solid evidence is what I'm trying to talk about here. Uh, they presume upon us solid evidence about their assertions about this when they're trying to put down this behavioral control system ultimately uh, under sustainable development. If you don't understand that that's what's going on with the war and the cops, the soldiers, wanting to show you and give you, make you behave subject to this authority that goes without check, and we don't normally go but to check it, we will complain, but we don't check it. This other little page did check it properly enough, and you can go see how that happened as well. But a study sees no solid evidence for man-made climate change. So in science, and here, let me just see if I can keep neutral with this. It's very important. Whether Whatever I believe or disbelieve here, let me just point out, science is the ability to submit something to refutation, to challenge and have it be challenged. So the science of climate change was looked at in, in science and challenged. And here, by this report, found wanting, folks. And so the science of climate change is actually here in someone challenging, irrespective of whether or not they found it or not here at this point, that they challenged it and put it to scrutiny is science. Now, the outcome of the, the finding upon evidence was that there's no evidence. 
And no, that would be predictable because it was a fabricated hypothesis. It's a made-up definition that doesn't look at the sun, that doesn't look at a lot of things, doesn't look at outer space and cosmic rays. It doesn't look at, at the reality. And then it was uh, filtered two more times through committees uh, that were fabricated. I think it was Maurice Strong actually invented this. It's a statistical relationship on a hypothesis that's never, hypothesis that's never been proven. Should, oh, well, it can't predict that there won't be finding it, but you would think because it's made up, they're not going to find it. It's kind of like dark matter. And they're not finding it, folks. It's a made-up thing. It's give somebody lots of money over years, uh, and lots of people get to study it. But at any rate, here, uh, no study. Finnish research duo has evaluated the human contribution to carbon dioxide increases uh, as a meager, meager, migre, that's how they have spe spell it here, 0 0.01 degrees, 0 0.01 degrees Celsius. Out of the lat, there's point, folks, point zero one degrees. Out of the last centuries, total increase of point one degrees. Instead, clouds were named as the culprit behind climate change. Now, I tell you that climate change can't be used in that sentence, but they used it here. We have weather, and we have a changing climate, and these are natural, and these happen all the time. Uh, but let's go to the causation now in their study, reviewing and challenging this assertion of climate change as we've been promoted and all the, the detrimental things that man does to, the, to Gaia, like she's not able to figure it out. Like we didn't come from here that she hasn't figured this out. The clouds were named as the culprit, which shows uh, even if you believe in greenhouse gases, and I really tread lightly here because it starts getting into the argument of an insane person. If you're going to go to the greenhouse gases, water is the most prevalent. Water is life, folks. And these people, these green uh, religious people, uh, these uh, green jobs adherents, the sustainable austerity, the sustainable punitive harmers, uh, believe that water is death. And so you, you, it's a death cult, essentially, and your function in it causes death. But not to, you need to be dead. So get back to the point. The science, in looking at the idea of climate change, finds no evidence for it. In fact, it finds if we give climate change anything, but we have to remove it from the restriction of man causation, water is actually, uh, well, I shouldn't say just water. It's condensed water. It's nucleated water in the atmosphere, right? It's come out of, out of vapor into a solid, a liquid, excuse me more than a vapor and so those are caused by uh, climate um, cosmic rays t to my understanding and if you remember if you ever get on the, even if you don't know and you haven't seen it get into the cosmic ray detector find a video on the youtube a cosmic ray detector dry ice in a chamber in a lot strong light and you'll see cosmic rays and you'll see how they how they cause uh, condensation of the atmosphere for a brief moment, and when the conditions are right, those 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 particles that are being uh, energi energized uh, to uh, have the water attract are so numerous that they just they continue and they become their own particle. They create clouds, and bigger ones, not just traces. Anyway, so it's just a lack of awareness in people about their own reality. And I'm not saying I have the complete reality. I have enough to know that. A statistical relationship of an unproven hypothesis is not going to likely show much. And they should have made those tests before they even did the promotion, but they didn't. And when we go look at it, evidence, again, if we want to get ourselves back to evidence, not opinions, not feelings, not any of this stuff, get back, that's how you're going to get to this reality. In fact, as I think about all this stuff, what comes to mind is outlaw best science for science. I mean, actually make the distinction that best science is a political lobbying condition and actual science is the, uh, merely the challenge of what we think we know. Well, that pretty well takes away all authority there, doesn't it, when you say it that way? And that needs to be a, now a law because we're too stupid to figure it out unless it's print, printed. People won't uh, recognize it. And the problem I have with that is they're not recognizing existing law that would preclude all of this stuff. And that means you're a bunch of you all are out there all hypnotized into this magic show that goes on. And that's pretty disconcerting to me uh, because I have to deal with that when we're just trying to lay down an objective basis. Just want to live back in peace. I just want to leave. I just want to go do what I want to do without bothering anybody. But there's not many people in the world that apparently want that, even though we'll talk about a lot of it. 
and we get into this climate change. I told you this is like a global thing. It sounds like a big old conspiracy theory. Well, it's not a theory. It's a conspiracy. And in our case, in the United States of America, and I have to say this because I don't know at some level what the actual rights of other countries are relative to land and the peons getting the land and the rights exclusive to the government itself. I don't know that that exists anywhere in the world. And so I have to speak specifically to here. And if it's not anywhere else in the world, maybe those of you elsewhere need to look at this and you need to work hard to make this as part of what you, where you live and throw off all these isms and start getting into the reality of whether you have exclusive control and can protect it, exclusive control of the land for your production purposes and can protect that or not. And so we have a, this is why it's a, a treason in the United States, whether or not, uh, and this is uh, whether or not anybody else, other than what I'm telling you, recognizes it this way. Uh, again, the, the default judgment by the Democratic Party, uh, the Republican Party, and the Bar Association in our lawsuit, and there was, there was like seven other, seven other parties there, uh, they all defaulted. They will not answer this. And uh, as we talk, I, I, I want to point out something else that's coming more clear again. When I, I've told you before, when you get in these grants, you have to use the language. And for those of you that are listening on legalism and legal, no, you get into the language. And yes, you have to get into the language. And I've told you before, within the grants of property and the disposal of land exclusively uh, for possession and use, and then the patent, which gives a, a surface, especially where the surface and the, and the subsurface, the dominant estate is there. Those uh, things are exclusive to the possessor. They cannot be trespassed. There's no authority anywhere that, that can come in. And so when you see a trespass on it, you are you witness the felony right up front. Bigger, when you see people moving against the law of this, they're making war on that law. They're committing the treason against you. That the words within, that are used within the conveyance to get to grant that conveyance, you have to stick to those. That language, I've told you this before, I'm going to say it because it's coming back up. I'm, we're actually reintegrating some of the old uh, uh, principles that we use to make sure that they're up front in, do, in discussing this. The, the language that you use will protect you because there's no one that can use that language without encroaching on the grant, on your rights. They won't use those words. They'll make euphemisms of those words. And so when you reconfine your language within the constraint of that authority, the outlaw can't, will not follow you. And that's how you identify it. And I say exclusive possession and enjoyment. They can never say that about their interest in that land because the word exclusive possession and enjoyment precludes that ability. And if they don't have the right to say that and they don't assert that, and you do, then you're looking facially as an admission of a felony and trespass on your property. And I don't mean that as just some neutral trespass. I mean, this is the highest crime as you can imagine in the United States of America. That the su su sustainable development and these weapons that they brought down, and this concepting of uh, uh, this weapon concepting of climate change, now we have two more people that who did science, who'd actually tested the hypothesis, even if we want to give it credit. And go ahead, let's give it credit. They couldn't find the evidence for it, like a court. They couldn't find an evidence. Well, on the other side, they could find the evidence that the cop was no good. You have to bring the evidence, folks. And this is the other part of the problem when you're not presumed innocent. You have to, uh, you are now imposed again to produce the evidence. Now, I would take that as a harm, as a felony harm, having to do that, where my presumption of innocence was fabricated. And now you, if you start to understand what I just said, you start bringing this color of authority. Even the military officer can't have immunity against that. Now, you may have to have a whole pile of these things, and this is what this other story is telling you. But we're talking about evidence, and we're talking about an imposition of things that are not in your establishment. Okay, They're not in your organic establishment, what you expected to see. What, those of you that have read what ought to be is in you. It's not going to come from them. It's got to be you and how you enforce it. Not because you can talk about it, but because you can show within the thing that they, the words that they were supposed to understand, how your language was trespassed over what they were given the right to. They speak in person. You're a man. They speak in uh, privilege. You have a property which has appurtenant rights and attendant rights that are not supposed to be a trans, a tres, trespassed against by them. And you shall find the statute for that. And you lay the thing out 
you speak in a different language than what they were supposed to do. It's like you live in a foreign country, even though you live in the same place. This is the jurisdictional stuff I keep talking to you about. So it's the strange case of Christia Freeland and the failure of the super elite is now moving us to Canada. And what's interesting about this thing, for, for me more, I can't even tell you about this article. Very interesting, though. For those of you who want to understand how in Canada, because, see, they don't have exactly the same type of property rights, and they can subtle move this thing in more subtly. And that this thing is, a, this report here, it's an Oriental Review, the strange case of Christia Freeland and the failure of the super elite, in quotes. You really need to read this article. I don't necessarily, and this is my hesitation here, but I don't necessarily agree with some of the assumptions or presumptions that are thrown in on the players on how this works. I don't necessarily agree that this is the queen, uh, how she maintains global authority. I don't necessarily agree with all There's other players and other things going on. However, you got, and what was interesting, is as I was reading through this, as I know what I know, you can start looking through some of the assumptive uh, characteristics placed on this story and you can watch and look at how they plan and who is saying what and where the players are and who who, who player which set of players are against other players in this article that exposes this thing I've been talking about and how people in it uh, in it or it's not they're not in it there's a many in it there's many things that are going on how one rela- doesn't relate or exposes or explains another how someone is assuming, you read right in here, how someone assumes an area. Talk about a super elite. This article talks there's like a super, super elite that looks into the super elite and discusses what they're going to have to do in the future or else. This was a really interesting insight that there's so much to this. I couldn't even take two hours to go through and discuss it. Be better, and I'm, I'm hoping a bit here that, that you won't get I don't know what to say. There's things you'll see if you have an awareness. That's all I can tell you. And I was looking almost right through what was actually being saying and being able to paint another, another, it's the same reality, but it's not explained the same way. It's more generalized. Where this article speaks specifically to the crowd, the queen trying to, like I told you, she came back and poisoned the gulf because she wants the south again. It's kind of like that. You're looking through that, though, at what's being done to harm you all, how it's all laid out, who some of the players are that looks at other people that are supposed to be authorities, and they're just, like I said, they're just arrogance, hubris, all this not supported whatsoever. In this article, quite a long article, where I can't go through it in a way I wish I could, there's just so much intangible information in this. It was. I just found it fascinating. I read it. I read it. I read it. It's almost like one of those things you can't put down. But my mind kind of went into like watching that 3D poster. We used to we used to look. You had to put your eyes just right, and all of a sudden you could see the you could see the dragon holding the balloons. That's what this writing was. If you have an awareness, and I don't want to put anybody down if you don't see it through that. But there is a lot in this little article. You have to look through the fate, the the curtain of this story. And look and know behind it these things are happening in uh, for other other purposes along the same lines. You wa- and you can watch the cur- other curtains that are thrown veils to confuse people is written in this story. Even though I don't agree with some of it, I it, I was just pretty, kind of interested. I don't know what I was. It was just uh, uh, captured by the fact you can look right through this story and see how you all are being taken down, what it takes, that there are people out there, they're doing this stuff, and then I have another thought working. Okay, this is I'm confirming all the stuff I've ever told you, but in this within the story, there could be any other number, names, and other conditions. It all ends up being the same. But my mind also, also working, okay, well, here's what this group thinks against that group and who these things and all this other these players, where they're positioning, and I can then look as I do. And this is why I'm asking you all to learn. Don't just think you know something. Learn how to apply it to things like this. I noticed my mind was working on what what are we doing relative to this sort of a plan where I live kind of thing. And I I was pretty interested to be able to take this let this story and qualify and or not necessarily adjust. I think we got I think I have it pretty well understood. But I could tell I'm working adjustments whether or not I should consider 
when they someone says something like hey, they did against another condition that I already knew existed, but in the way they said it, I'm looking at, okay, well, that's their mindset. Are we adjusted in what we do against that mindset? Was another, it was like a different analysis going on. Looking through, don't take this on facial. And, and this is a tool for all y'all that want to do this. I guess why I'm taking any time here. For me, it became the tool of, of um, reanalyzing reconsideration relative to documents of the people that are pushing something that's a fraud on the whole world, like climate change or sustainable development or financial debt across the globe. These things, modernization principles, which are not modern at all, they're like throwbacks, bringing you back to the medieval, uh, current medieval times. This is uh, just a, one of those kind of reports. And anyway, so I don't know what to say. It's hard to describe it. I just know it's important. You need to see it. I'll just, if you, those, those of you who don't kind of go get the link, maybe at the blogcaster, I'll repeat the title. The Strange Case of Christia Freeland and the Failure of the Super Elite, in quotes, and uh, this is of the Oriental Review. Learn, this is a synopsis of the players that would do something against you like climate change. Come underneath best sciences. And if you don't understand the term best sciences, is, is you, you, now ubiquitous within the structure and the system that defeats us on all of these things as well. Whatever the science so-called is, it's a political affront to you. It's a fraud. It's the evidence that they use. It's a fraud but hasn't been caught yet why it also requires people to catch it. You want to talk about you know, speaking truth to power, I'm telling you how this works right now. This is how you speak truth to power. You just don't get in some authoritas face when they have the power to shoot you. It's a different game than what I've been hearing people play. You know, I don't like that it's a game. I don't like that we have to play it. But we're here nonetheless. You know, what, so what are you going to do about that? You can... Uh, yeah, I can talk and t whatever you want to do, you can vilify me. You can just not have a thought about me. You can disregard what I'm saying. You can say it's not, a, uh, not on you because I'm not here. I pretend, la, la, la. You can do whatever you want. If you haven't looked around and noticed how they've progressed the war of terror over the last 15, 19 years or 18 years, you've missed it, folks. You're missing. That's another type of thing. And it all somehow, I can kind of get it interrelated without saying to say how big a how big a conspiracy this is, but it's like one thing plays off the other. It's almost if you, it's like look a bunch of different criminal organizations looking to see what the other criminalization, the creativity of another criminalization adopting that creative uh, attack. And you're, a, you're it's transparent to you all, so you don't see that now we've got a whole bunch of criminal syndicates working against you, doing all the same, all the same tricks. They all learn from each other, and you respond to the the, the effects. You don't you don't look at the cause. And then when you see that it's a cause, I think you do this ahead of time. You see, oh, there is a cause. I don't want to go do that. I don't, I'm going to hand that responsibility to the guy behind the woodshed. He sounds like he knows this stuff better than I do. And I'll uh, just tell you, folks, we don't. We just know what we know. And we can only get out to so many places. Uh, just, I'm conceding to you on air. This week, but not on West Standing, we've got a big deal. Uh, acknowledgement of our work is, is being acknowledged. The same week, we get the we get the humbling experience that, we just lost a we just lost a line that we've been develop a, a defensive line that we've been we've been building for years, and it took a bunch of stupid people to do it. We real I realize I can't keep up with that kind of stupid. I'm only one guy. I'm only my colleagues only another guy. My other there's only three of us or over four of us. We can only be in so many places and we can only counter in so many ways. We need a whole lot more, and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be in what we do. In fact, it'd be probably better if it wasn't. That's why I come here every week to say, folks, if you, you know, if you've thought about freedom even the way you understand it, it, it takes work anymore. And it's and we're so, if you don't understand this war thing, uh, this war th idea that we're in a battle, it takes every day to go do something, something, even small amounts. Be the sniper that crawls through the grass can only move an inch, an inch every few minutes. That's that might be what you're what you end up having to do. I don't know, but. Uh, it's, it takes a lot more than what I'm seeing. Another thing about underneath this sustainable de uh, development thing, and uh, we had this like predating its pre presentation was uh, UN provided rights, global rights. In other words, you see when the UN does it, it's like a veneer of authority. It's removing you, one one removal away from uh, uh, from this uh, from your own laws, and so your laws need to be kept. Otherwise, come, people come in and take them away from you. 
one of those things has been very detrimental in, in subject. I mean, in, in, in part of my my experience uh, was uh, what popped up as the rights of child. And this is an interesting little story I've kind of followed a little bit relative to that, and that governments can oppose what is assumed to be good relative to this thing that hit the world called rights of child. It's all, again, UN imposition of adjunct type of things that blends everybody's jurisdiction into one a Borg, one homogenous type thing. It's not distinct. And you start going down those model acts and you start adopting them and you don't look any different than the next guy, then why do you need a border is their point. And I'm suggesting to you strongly that you need to look at all these things and how this dynamic works. And here's an example of how at least one country won't, won't go with that. And they actually think that the nuclear family, as best as it can be held together, is more important. As the Polish court refuses to expel Russian dad who took his daughters from Swedish Muslim family. And you, again, those of you that are interested in child services in the United States, I've told you I, that's how I got beat down there back in the trying to make a documentary on what they do through child, the rights of child, through the uh, child services, and what happens behind that. And now we blow we blow up this uh, pedophilia thing, and we blow up the LGBT thing, and this whole thing is uh, it goes cattywampus pretty quick. And trying to expose that, I keep saying I saw another someone else trying to expose this is dead. I feel pretty fortunate to be here talking relative to what I was doing, but apparently I wasn't, uh, though I had a documentary that it could expose it, the danger ended when they ended the the, the potential of the documentary getting uh, getting exposed. And so that's where their in, uh, interest ends, which shows an intelligence as well. Uh, so you got to be concerned with that kind of response. But a Swedish, a uh, Polish court, uh, dis the judge described the Muslim family where the Russian's daughter were placed as a culturally and mentally alien environment for the Christian girls. The Warsaw District Court has rejected the demand by Sweden to expel Russian national Denis Lizov, who took his three daughters back from a Muslim family and sought asylum in po Poland. This dynamic is sickening for me to read at all, that a man has to run with his girls to a different country and then hope that they help him out to keep his family together, where the country he, moved, he went to from Russia, uh, Sweden, I think it was, yeah, Sweden, attacked his family and fabricated again they create the presumptively correct evidence that they also then block any of counter evidence which is another problem you have to understand again, to me this is all just dynamic of the crime and i guess that's why i even talk about it uh, but this is how they destroy your families and this polish court says no you, you can't the swedish agency that declared that the man couldn't do things didn't have the right to put the children who are Tradition and custom and culture and lifestyle make a make a foreign impos a foreign imposition on that. Now we get to the United States of America, and you would have to very I would say look at this very carefully because this may be one of the answers. The problem with here, and now you start to see the failure of these things, where they take away the scrutiny of religious culture, they make everything inclusive. Now you don't have that defense that Poland recognized, and now you see. If you haven't seen it before, you see the problem with all inclusiveness and no cell walls. And then the authority of the state to say so, like they own you and they own your kids. And they can tell you whether or not they can make up a case, fabricate the evidence that you can't refute that says you're no good. What have I said about them just fabricating evidence to say you're a criminal? You don't have to be. You can be as pure as the driven snow if there is such a thing, and you can be found in the evidence without right of, of rebuttal to be a criminal. And so this Polish, this is interesting to me that the Polish court looked inside the, the daughters. It, it's a form of looking at what's best for the children, but in fact it was based on a prior custom and habit and tradition and culture and religion in this case. And so I, I thought this was an important story. I was happy to hear there was no, no evidence that shows that the, the man was uh, was a bad at all, not even close. And so this is what he threatened. This is, what got me was that this story ex admits that Sweden is doing what other, oh, lots of other nations do through their child services. And at least it took one country. Like I had to flee to a country. What if I told you I had to advise 
the mothers, typically mothers at the time, I don't didn't never have to talk with, with the, at the time, I guess they weren't taking children from men, but they do now. But the women that I had talked about, or talked with about this CSD cops showing up on your door, the only advice I could show because we, there was the power of this, the, the, the felony of this thing is so great and in systemic. I said, you have to run. You can't fight this. You have to remove your children, your so-called children, your sons and daughters, from the jurisdiction and fast before they get an order. Now, you see, that I before I ever heard about this story, I said, run. What did this guy do? Collected his daughters up and ran. He got charged by the removing agent, uh, by the uh, jurisdiction he went from. Uh, but the one he fled to, in this case he could flee, uh, to get this question resolved and was in favor the fleeing that you do within the states, you don't have that. And so it becomes you flee and be quiet. And I've told you, the only women that have had have their their uh, sons and daughters are the ones that did that. Every other one that thought that they could have a right that justice would prevail lost their sons and daughters to the system. And then my only other evidence, uh, my uh, suggestion was do not take, uh, do don't let any time to meet with them go away and make up times to meet with them. Keep them in the front of the system. Don't let them get buried back in the back. Don't let them even go back a month or two months. There's too much programming that goes on when you don't have access. It's a big burden. This is the crime against us. And so anyway, this, I found this fascinating. We, we get to see that at least uh, Poland looked at at really some fundamental antecedent authority within the father for his for his uh, daughters and there was no evidence to counter the fact that 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 should prevail and, and so just important uh, important to see there is a reflection of some sanity relative and to counter this global imposition that seems so normal to people and no one seems to speak out about it. But if you look, it's tied. These things are tied to heinous, heinous things. I mean, I can't imagine that, that it would have turned out how widespread the child services actually being like adult services and standing underneath the street pole, but behind the scenes, uh, trafficking. Now, human trafficking. There's all laws against it, but see, there's no real accountability. Well, and I shouldn't say that. We're now seeing political accountability, apparently, you know, with all we hear in this Epstein stuff and all that. And you see all the cockastocracy tied in with all that. I mean, I don't even know what the story is on that. And we do, I don't even know. Uh, he did something wrong, and so he's going to be called out for it. I told you, when you don't see you don't see the system being attacked very much, and it's pervasive, it's the main cause of this, is the people in the system allowing it. And we see this rising to the top in Epstein. It's not even a news to me. What I'm wondering is how they're going to, what are they covering up? What's the What's the big cover-up? Anyway, I won't get too lost on that. Uh, so let me move on now. What uh, we can bring forward, people who take action to defend themselves, can bring forward things that are more r- rational, more reasonable, and lawful, and and stop harming people. And just uh, I don't want to. I, I just want people to see. I guess in it, hopefully, as an encouragement through long terms of work working through problems, getting and finding the right people, that what you do can be acknowledged, whether or not it ends up turning out what we want. The work that I tell you that we do reaches places finally. And I was surprised. I I was told I would be surprised when I heard this. And I was a bit. But again, it's a two-edged sword. What I tell you behind behind the woodshed relative to what we do on public lands and public and private property and the county authorities and the 10th Amendment, like through coordination and what that means and how the counties have to step up within the proper police powers, not the ones they used to beat you down with, but the ones they used to protect you, keep the peace of the real peace, uh, deal with the federal agencies within these western states that, in a way that balance, really, truly balances back out the authority so that the federal doesn't become this uh, this our arsonist it has become uh, and mismanage the public lands and for the benefit of the people – uh, there was a, for those of you that want to go check it out, and I'm not asking you to even go go look uh, if you don't. I mean, to read the whole, to listen to the whole thing. Again, I'm not totally agreeable with how this thing came out, but it's an acknowledgement. It's there for everyone to see. Uh, it says, "Watch Trump discusses quote America's environmental leadership." Close quote. 
Uh, you get in to find it's uh, you get a link. It's over. I found it on PBS. You go to the video, and you got to kind of go in about 30 minutes in or so, and you'll see someone get introduced by the president, and make a statement relative to the public land manner more proper and stopping the smoke and the threat of the fires and the work that's being done to, behind the scenes to make that happen and make it better. And I just want to point that out to you, and I think that's all I'll say. That's what I tell you we've been doing and helping for any county that wants to know how got that work in one, at least one place, got acknowledged in Washington. And uh, we don't know yet where that's going, but we now have more doors will probably open and we'll continue to press quietly behind the scenes however we can. And so that was a, a neat thing to watch. In my mind, to tell you the truth, it, it's just a next step. We're not done. So it's to me, it's, okay, we got it. Let's keep, you know, my mind's always keep moving. But this is pretty big in, in one regard. I can relax a bit to say, uh, acknowledging the work that my colleagues and I do to be represented and recognized in Washington is a, a big, big deal in the context that Washington, the policies of an administration, definitely affect you Western states. And there's a proper way to, to move things through. And apparently, I didn't know this, but apparently that does get recognized somehow. And so maybe as an encourage, hopefully as encouragement to some of you that don't look like things happen and not expecting it, work can be uh, can be acknowledged and be recognized on a national level. And you'll hear in that statement relative to public lands management, proper forest management, and fires and smoke, you'll, you'll hear... Uh, the na the nation of counties now understands some of this stuff that was never known before. Okay, so we, we have a place with a better thought. We have a better place we can get back out, even though it sounds completely oppressive. So, anyway, uh, 30 minutes in, I think it is. It's uh, when we you get the introduction of uh, who it is. I'm not going to even say much more. Uh, you just look at listen to the subject matter. You know, so that you know it's a double check. It's you've heard me talk about it. You've heard this is what we've been doing. And we, we, it's fine. That work has gotten recognized. We won't get recognized, and I'm not. We didn't even think about it. But uh, that work, what to, what needs to be done, has been recognized, and I, that's a big deal because before it was nothing. We were getting attacked on these very same things. So, anyway, move on uh, here. At uh, another thing, I was telling you about over this time, and to be careful for all of y'all who think you live in uh, you know America, the free, the home, the brave, and the and the land of clean water. The pristine water, folks. So this, again, climate, this sustainable development nonsense. These people that come in and say the waters are pristine. I mean, it's nonsense. Nonsense. And yet, look at what they've done with this nonsense. And this is killing us. But uh, I told you a long time ago, uh, when they were talking about Flint, Michigan, and a couple, I said, be careful. This, there's bad water all over the place, folks. And I'm, I really wasn't really talking about places just uh, with wells and things, because uh, that water can be bad or good. It depends on where you're at. I'm talking about the municipal systems. Well, I told you years ago, be careful. You better, be, If you're in a municipal system, you better start looking how they check it out and what they do and the tests they do because there's more places than Flint because that's just a cover. You have lots of places out there that are not going to meet the standards and you're not being told. And here we have a proof uh, over these years. We've got at least 2% of the U.S. public water systems are like Flint's. Americans just don't hear about them. And I'm going to add, and when you did and do, you're not going to do a thing about it. Now, I say that as a, as a challenge. And so, 2%, folks, what does that mean? I found this as fascinating. I know I started reading through this. I go, what does 2% mean? How they throw these, these things out that you don't even, your mind doesn't even know how to deal with that, actually. More than five years after Flint's water crisis hits the news, and oh, this is a this is actually a promotion that Flint's water now supposedly meets certain standards. But remember, it was only pursuant to the lead, and I want you to understand that they only talk about the lead. I don't know about the others, and that's the point. We don't know about the others, and I can tell you that there's lots of minerals that are in the ground in the water because they're there naturally, and there may be or may not may or may not be ways that they can get rid of it. But they'll make a big deal about it. They use them as stocking horses. Again, these people on the outside will use this problem. Uh, again, uh, what do they say? Uh, water without borders. See, this is how they get into your country because you don't want to build a border. You don't want to build a cell wall that keeps this nonsense out. And then you agree. You open the door to it like like a vampire. Oh, yeah, come on in. And then they get you. 
Uh, now you become, you know, one of them kind of thing. Uh, but anyway, they talk about this lead in the water and uh, that Flint may have done some stuff. But they talk about this 2%. And uh, what triggered me in my mind, uh, I'm triggered, yeah, it, it was the 2%. I told you before it was more than just a couple of metropolitan areas of bad water. You need to get out in your water. How did I start to know that? Well, I was uh, on a budget committee one time when I thought it was something cool. And I had, to, I had an opportunity to go look at a, water, a municipal water system for a small place. And I didn't, can't tell you at that point I could find something terribly to tell you, terrible to tell you, but I could tell that there was these interesting little anomalies that at the time it wasn't my job. I was on a budget committee. I, I wasn't, wasn't looking at whether or not it was doing things accurately. Or maybe I, and, and I didn't even really know the totality of what I would be looking at. But I noticed there were certain things that could go on in the reporting that, that, that could slip by or maybe not be reported or maybe there wasn't enough money really to, to do the, the test. And so this is information that doesn't come out. And in fact, this makes this story here. And they go through trying to go talk about it. What is this 2%? Two, 2%? Well, I did some real quick check. You get the links too. You can do all this check yourself. I'm more interested that you know that your public water systems may not be, and despite what you're being told, they may not be safe. And uh, be careful about getting, going too deep on it. We have lots of people doing lots of things. But if it becomes natural, a natural thing, you might have a little bit of trouble pushing how to get rid of it. But, but notwithstanding that, you need to know what's in your water because that uh, may affect how you how you uh, use that water. But uh, go to the EPA's own website and uh, finally got some numbers I could work out. It says, they say they're here, uh, what the size of the public water system is that they measure which is important. It's kind of like when the fire, forest fire is started by lightning. They don't consider that to be something that they would measure. They're, you're, you're not going to get a forest fire particulate count be, of a, a, of a um, lightning struck fire because that's wild. They don't measure that. Why? Because their jurisdiction is in the commercial man caused stuff. Remember? See how this works? Don't forget, EPA is one, one complete pillar of the UN agenda. But so from their information, they tell you the limit of what a public water system is they look at. It has to have at least 15 service connections, which means everybody with less isn't even on the list. But let's just go with that, with those, and they're serving a, uh, those connections with at least 25 people. Uh, they have 151,000 public water systems in the United States. 151,000. Let's go back to that 2%. That 2% of 151,000 means there's 3,000 or so locations that uh, don't have water that's potable, likely uh, meeting the, these lists. And these again, these lists, these uh, standards are based on what the water can possibly produce, not necessarily that it's clean. It just has a standard it meets, whether or not that's accurately reported. So as a, we can say 3,000, that's about as many. There's a, probably one city in every county in this country that uh, is a, has a problem with their water. And so, tangible, uh, more confirmation from the words of the uh, government and its propagandizers, the press, uh, the media, MSM, to tell you you're likely living in a metropolitan area or some municipal water system that's uh, not meeting the standard. Just like I told you, be careful. Don't get focused on elsewhere out there. It's already probably happening with you locally. And so, again, I guess this is a kind of a theme of the sustainable development thing, the global oppression, uh, the green religion, the green jobs bill, remember? The green this, the green that. That's how they, they come out with. I talked to you last week or a week before about this uh, green capitalism and the fact that they use now carbon as the stocking horse harm that you are, that they're going to punitively tax you. Again, the parasite feeding from you, that's the leverage funding system. You can see it everywhere once you see this about how this works. You can predict it's coming. Like I said, the PG&E thing, I, you look at that and say, well, they're predicting. Are they going to admit to doing the not doing the maintenance they're already getting money for? Are they going to now demand more money? Well, that was a signal to the legislators to go ahead and build a big fund that the pay, rate payers will pay more into. They still aren't looking at the PG&E to do the maintenance, but they're going to get the funds to tax you, the rate payers, to put in a fund that guess what they get to do? They take that fund and they also then bond it and monetize it. And so they get double more value out of that thing. Now, if they're not going to uh, stop the fires now, well, how does building a fund like that, that they suck parasitically off and manufacture fiat, how is that going to stop the fires? I don't think people think about. 
But this is how they do it. This is leverage funding. This is what we started to. Su this is what we sued on. As soon as I saw the leverage funding coming through to do the uh, the HB well, SB through eight thirty eight, I knew what we were dealing with. I told you that. I told you that years ago. I said we were looking. For, I was looking for the money. Follow the money, folks. They didn't pay for all the harm they were going to uh, for the infrastructure. They needed to pay for it, and then it came through. Just like this, this guy, they admitted they're not doing something. That's the hallmark of a theft against the ratepayer to keep the maintenance up, causing death and destruction, folks. And now you're going to get to pay for it. That's it. That's how they do it. Uh, so then uh, Charles uh, Smith comes up and another to confirm again uh, that this is no just a some guy in behind which they just come up with stuff and no, oh, it's a, oh, it sounds. Pretty creative, and it sounds cool. No, this is reality. This is what, how it comes down on you all, all of you. None of you are escaping any of this, uh, as long as you keep crickets. But predatory green capitalism. Now that he's put a title on it, pretty great. Green capitalism. It's the same. You look at the the uh, irony of this. The, the socialists, the, the deep. What? They're not even socialists. These are criminals. Will will deny capitalism. And so you all know, I just abandoned all that isms. I just said c capitalism, socialism. No, no, no. What's coming on us is a major, is a crime. Forget, forget the isms. And this, let's go back to the language of our law, and you'll be more likely protected than not. The green capitalism is a group of people that don't. They'll tell you they don't agree with capitalism. They know all about it. They just want to be in control of it. Uh, like gore, uh, gore is goring you, and the inconvenient truth is he's goring you with this climate change fraud that there's no evidence of, folks. But it's a weapon against all societies around the globe. Uh, predatory green capitalism is uh, monetizing the air, and it's going to cost you. Very important article. He does a decent job talking about it. Well, you want to reduce CO2, the trigger of global depression that reduces global consumption and everything by 50% and destroys 95% of the phantom wealth owned by the global elites trying to monetize the air. Well, they're not because it's in the carbon, not carbon dioxide. So be careful. I agree with his expose, and I more agree with it. He calls it green capitalism, the antithesis of what they claim they're doing. But in fact, that's exactly what this is, going through carbon taxes. He says predatory. I say parasitic. We're very consistent here. Just If you can just be loose on how this is discussing, he's recognizing uh, he's an economic mind. He's saying this thing is uh, green capitalism. This thing is going to come after you and going to take, he actually equates it like the Catholic Church and giving indulgences. It's great. I just appreciated uh, this article a bit that way. Uh, so go read it, understand how this thing kind of works, what, this, what the scam is. Understand he's talking CO2, but in fact it's now carbon tax, not carbon dioxide tax. So you got to understand how it's transitioning, and they get you incrementally to move deeper and deeper into their into their fangs, you get to you walk you walk right into the fangs they have set up for you, and you never say a thing against it, or you just argue. You see, I said, don't make an issue of it. Don't argue. You bring up the facts. I got now a case that says there's at least two guys out there that scientifically tested this statistical relationship on a hypothesis that's never been proven and shown that they were both. Well, that means the statistical relationship has to be a fraud because there was nothing to the hypothesis they attached to it. Where was the statistics coming from? And so you start thinking again, and Brian start working again, and you start realizing these people are doing what they're telling you that they're not doing. They're they're establishing economies on top of on top of you by leverage funding systems, taxation systems, which is your civil rights, Title 42, 1981. It's on and on, folks. The proof's right there. Proof's in the reading. Just read it. Stop making stuff up, and uh, get you there. Get you to stop. Get you to places a lot quicker. Anyway, I don't want to go too much for, further. It's a big fraud, but he identifies it as a as a capitalism counter to what they say they're doing. It's gonna be about how they steal your wealth. That means it's coming from your productive sector because there's no wealth created in the tertiary economic sector. It's all parasitic uh, eat, uh, feeding. It's all predatory. And so I appreciated this story probably as much as. Uh, Maybe others I've seen and that he's written, although there's some others that weren't, weren't quite up up to some par of the way I understand things. At any rate, so he goes through it, tells you that this is about capitalism, and you're probably not and likely not going to be part of it. And it's going to be feeding on you. 
your your life's needs are going to be feeding, uh, being fed from, and you're going to allow it because you don't. Well, I don't know. I can't say you can't listen here. You're listening, but those of you that do listen, and for the most part, the society that doesn't listen has no clue uh, what to start to address. And I've explained in the simplest sense: if you can show this thing, they have no warrant, and they do it under color of some authority, and they have interfere with your rights or your property or both. You know the appurtenances. Uh, they're in a felony, in your state under your state law. And I say I'll have to say likely because I've not researched all state laws. I'm talking the United States because of this property thing, this this land land law, the land thing. This is the really the 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 big uh, demarcation. And I don't know about other places, so I don't know if you can rely on it. If you can, then you're you're you can benefit from that making that demarcation. Otherwise, for like places like in the Crown, you have some good laws where the Crown, if we look at very carefully, and I, and I can just tell you this is another study that we're doing, and I was talking to you a little bit about just mentioned it, looking at the distinction in commerce and mercantilism and this and that, even when you go into the Crown uh, back uh, in history, there made a distinction between the peasants and the work the peasants did and the mercantile. And the right to, to, to use the highways was not conditionable as the mercantile. And that's the same thing I'm talking about relative to being enumerated in the United States that's been habit, custom, and common law. I don't mean the common law of the United States. I mean the common law of, of England and, and, its ter- and her territory and the crown's, uh, the queen's territories. The, that is the same thing if you can attach it there for, your, for Australia, what I think it was in New Zealand, Canada, Kanukistan, the UK itself. In some regards, I like the laws I see there. They're a little bit more direct. You can actually use them pretty direct. We can't do that in the United States, I've found as well. But you need just to adjust what I'm saying. And I think you can find the similarities, but you're going to have to go back into what the king did about the time of the Magna Carta. Be careful about attaching to it, but look at the functioning and the system that was working and what was touched and what wasn't. And then you place yourself in the peasant position that isn't the mercantiles for the reason. That's why you do it, and therefore you you make that distinction. And then you're, you're in what I'm talking about here, uh, the and what what they're preying on, and what they're not supposed to touch. You're 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 you the people are sitting in the land and the law of the land, the tertiary economy, which is government and its all its legalisms, all of its licensees is not to step, reach down into the primary foundation of the nation. And it does all the time. And you whine about it, and until you see that they're not supposed to and how, you're good. Oh, I guess all you're going to do is whine about it and, and come up with, with other things about, about around that and still not do anything to stop the reaching into your pocket or stealing your land or actually killing you or whatever the heck they do under color of authority. Uh, again, so color of authority comes up in an interesting thing relative to now the carbon as well. I find interesting. They don't they don't stop this boat because it's got a load full of carbon. No, that they stop it because there's political nonsense going on in the world. And it just got my mind thinking. For some of you in, um, you know, you want to speak about admiralty and stuff. Here's some stuff in the world you can start actually using. And I found it interesting because you can attach when you start realizing that the let's say something like a navigable river. Listen very carefully, navigable river. Navigable happens to be in commerce. A navigable river is considered a highway. And when you read enough, you'll find run across that when they make a highway in the land, they dredge the uh, the base the for the base rock to be poured. Uh, you start to see a correlation between waterways and landed uh, highways, uh, landed uh, throughways, roads. Uh, so there's a loose connection I want you to just kind of think about in this story. But also then we bring in the concept of uh, minerals and sovereigns and all this other thing. And international law isn't really a law. It's a bunch of customs and, and, and rules and uh, agreements. Unless there's treaties which can, circ- which can over- which overpower. You start looking at a hierarchy. This next story is really interesting. And for those of you that want to do better, a better understanding of things like admiralty, things like international law, things like how to inter- how do the the nations dealing with uh, these uh, th- these issues or not doing it and uh, doing the analysis about how they violated it and then that gives somewhat of an insight at how they're violating you at home as well but you get to start to understand a little bit more what I'm talking about 
Uh, the yeah, Gary, I looked over there. See, fish need roads too. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, well, they're highways. So when you see them in the context of commerce and the interaction with the nations. Uh, you then could start asking questions on these reports that you see about what's going on. And I don't want to undermine this, and I don't want to sound like I'm going one side or the other. I'm saying you take these reports that you see and you start applying actual what's supposed to happen, and you find out who the players are that are willfully violating these provisions or finding uh, what their arguments are to avoid or evade these what would be known things. And I want you to add another element. Remember in the murder memo, the United States threw out international law. They threw out the, well, they agreed with indefinite detention without any, again, punitively, without any due process. Okay? So they threw out the law of war as well. And so this rides behind the, this thought as well. There's all, when I tell you I think about, I have different categories. I've got all these things in my mind I'm working and qualifying as I read. And I'm asking questions if I don't know, and I go try to research some of the things that I don't understand or didn't quite gel with what I thought I knew, and I qualified that again. And so there's a lot going on in my head uh, when I'm re reading some of this stuff. But uh, this story was interesting relative to also we got this climate change, not supposed to be carbon, and we got this boatload of carbon apparently, and it doesn't know, and climate change doesn't come up with the fact that I ran, uh, no, I didn't, I ran, uh, I didn't run nowhere. I, Iran, here we go, that's probably a little better. Iran. Uh, is got a boatload of carbon somewhere. It didn't talk about it that way, and they were trying to sequester the carbon by stealing the ship away. Again, the political nonsense, the rattling the sabers and all this other stupidity, trying to get an agenda, another style of agenda through. But uh, so it, you can look at a you can look at an Admiralty International Law here. I think it's important if you those of you that speak about it and think you know about it and want to condemn it. Uh, there's uh, instructions to learn in the dealing of it, uh, but more importantly as well. Understand the uh, the not not just the failures, but the intentional mischaracterization, uh, because that's the method you're watching. How these people who think that they have an authority getting around you at home, that you have to analyze and figure out the correlated back over to where you are, and they use this. They're trained all the same, it seems, at how they do this. And if you understand that, then you can respond better as an investigative reporter to get the facts and elements that pull an officer outside of their qualified immunity, what they know very well. What they are challenging is whether or not they are so sharp in their ignorance and their, their, in their ignorance that they can be too smart to be a cop, that they think they can outsmart you being too ignorant to be, to be smart, that we're in a condition where you can be too smart to be a cop, that they think they can actually rely on this protection system is the thing you're going to rely on when you bring up the list of things when you're doing the investigative reporter when they confront you. And remember, it's not am I detained, am I free to go? The first thing is what's your probable cause that I've got, you've witnessed a crime. That's your, and you pretty much stick on that for a little while until they're going to show you they're going to, they're going to hurt you. And then you move on, and you move, keep moving and keep doing your investigative reporting. But anyway, I ran, remember, seizures and all this other stuff. See, this all comes to bear. It's real consistent with land law. And you see, like I said, I read the Benedicts on Admiralty. I got to the penal statutes under Admiralty, and I found the state, a state's penal code in that uh, at Benedicts on Admiralty, except for a few things different. I was looking, I was, again, I happened to read the state's penal code to know this, like I'd done the analysis about the Model Business Corporation Act sub supplanting or substituting the, the laws of the people, I had to have read the Foreign Corporations Law and Corporations Law to have it in my mind what they were saying there. And when I read this other thing, I said, wow, that's this over here, not this over here. So understanding enough to qualify and think while you're reading, I get to the penal code in, uh, what's penal code in Admiralty, and I found the penal code of a state. If, if, if you want to start realizing how close we are to the consistencies here, and yet, when you go and they tried to blend equity and admiralty in the federal side in the United States, they couldn't do it so cleanly. And so there you go. You look for those anomalies. What couldn't they blend? Maybe that's advice that informs us as how we're going to move through some of this. Did I go? I hope I'm not going too fast. These are the, these are kind of the, the nuggets of how this works. If I'm going too fast, you're thinking you know too much. And I'm saying that advisedly because I don't go working with this a lot. I just learned what I learned. I picked it up. I learned to move with it and take on these principles and these tools. And these. I kept moving with it. 
So this is another, I had to go back a little bit in my thoughts. Like some things I really don't remember too much. You don't use it, you lose it a bit. But they're there. I have a thought about it. I have an understanding. Iran tries to seize British oil tanker. Well, what was this all about? Well, first of all, it's probably MSM propaganda that Iran probably tried to seize it to invoke something. Oh, we got to go to war, right? Because this is the war drums being beat. Well, maybe not. Maybe mili Iran military didn't do anything like that, and we got to keep that that potential. Even so, what was this about? Well, it just so happens that a boat full of oil was going through the Gibraltar, and the Brits detained it. And they claim they had a good reason. And that's what I saw. The, wait a minute now. Is that actually a good reason? Now, they can say something, but is it actually a functioning reason in, in, what, in whatever customs and habits and traditions are going on around, uh, regarding the water? And what else comes up here is the, the law of the sea. That's now an, a newer imposition. Now, they're working out, this is all the nations themselves working this thing out amongst themselves. But this had to do with, in my mind, moving through the ocean. How do you get through a state, a strait, uh, and then get into the Mediterranean from the Atlantic and do it so that you can move your stuff through? Because this story starts with British Britain taking an Iranian freighter uh, uh, with Iranian oil on board headed for Syria. And right there, that was a whole lot of problems. They said that that violated EU rules. Well, my thought about my my understanding is that there's a couple of different pres uh, laws and customs about passage on the on the oceans, and the law of the sea altered that a little bit. But it didn't actually, except for having, when you declare a certain provision, you have to accede to the territorial, the landed territorial government's um, supremacy over that which is why you got to be careful on what you say. And what, uh, but anyway, uh, there's so much to say here too, but this is so important. There's a, supposed to be this highway, and underneath the new uh, modern world, we're supposed to have free, what they call transit and passage rights. And there's all kinds of different statuses, and they all have different limitations or acknowledgements or authorities. And you have to research back, because these all come out of war. It is in the Admiralty, not just maritime. Is slightly different, and this was a fascinating story. My my question began on this paragraph: Gibraltar Thursday detained. Now Gibraltar, not the UK, which is controlling Gibraltar, or half of it anyway. G Gibraltar last Thursday detained a super tanker carrying crude oil to Syria because it had reasonable grounds, in quotes, to believe to believe that the Grace One ship was violating European Union sanctions against Syria. The chief minister of Gibraltar. Fabian uh, Picardo said in a statement, uh, Fabian Society Ricardo, I guess, Picardo, uh, Picard, no, okay, all these interesting little names, but uh, wow, I looked at that and said, well, how is that? First of all, in mining law, in mineral law, a uh, sovereign is the owner of its uh, minerals, isn't it? Is that, is EU have a say over that sovereign's uh, oil? No. How about the ship? Does the EU have a say over the ship registered with Iran? No. How about the passage? Well, okay, here's the question. Did it have right to go from point A to point B? Well, my understanding is it does under numerous different provisions. First of all, it's not, an, it's not a military ship, so, well, unless they're going to show tell us that there's guns, but it was not a military ship, and in fact, it didn't want or need to dock anywhere along the territorial waters that were expanded now because of the law of the sea. And so there's this overlap, and there's a conditional change, which is even under contention amongst the sovereigns that we want to say, all these nations that go to meet together to work this stuff out, which at some point I believe, I believe all these nations should come together so they can work it out before we start sending 18-year-olds to go die. So reasonable grounds. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, now let's go through. It wasn't the EU's oil. It wasn't the EU's ship. Uh, e, uh, Syria's not EU. Uh, now, the, NATO wants to make it part of the, you know, this. T they got Turkey sitting right in there trying to muscle its way in. That's NATO. And Turkey's great at straddling a fence. So, dude, that's probably the, you want to look at how to straddle a fence? Watch Turkey. The Turkeys. But is this ship? at all underneath EU would be only by the passage uh, through that strait. But in the old and the new, I couldn't rationalize how the EU had any reasonable belief there was a violation. 
Why? Because this was also two sovereigns making a contract between each other, correct? In things that were owned by, uh, in rights of each sovereign. The neighbor down the street's argument with that, notwithstanding, they have no right in this. There is no reasonable claim that they can make in this. Unless what? Unless they violated the traditions and customs and rules or understandings of passage. And so, this is an analysis. I guess I should, can't really go too deep. I can go some of it. We can go on and on and on. All this stuff, folks, is on and on and on. It's, it's you really got to keep your mind into some of this. Uh, that's why I say focus in on something because you're going to have to become an expert for that. I can't be the expert. I can just have an overview. I can lead you to the path uh, trailhead, as I keep telling you. I can do somewhat on this. Uh, but I want to relate this issue because it's such a, a nasty thing that's going to happen over an agenda that the United States wants to do. It's become important. It's important. It's important to all of you all that, that may be facing war and have to go fight. Uh, and then are then the influx of all the invasion that's going to come to try to come in to hurt us in our, our so-called homeland, the motherland, over this nonsense. Uh, so this is why it's important. But it's more important to see that what the dynamics is about what they'll do around this ship. It relates directly to your highways and your passage and who they think they are and what the excuses they use. And so I look at it as an object lesson on look at what the conditions are, analyze for the silences and the failures, the omissions, the lies, whatever, and then you can apply them locally, and you have to. They give you a, a great insight. Uh, Gibraltar, Strait of Gibraltar, the, uh, I got a little link for you here that... Um, will explain what this is about. The sea lanes are there. They talk about its importance relative to Suez Canal before it was made, which is also controlled, right? And so we go through and we, we hear in this, in this link to get an idea what are they operating under for passage, and they speak of it. And it's, it's sub, because of the ruling and the agreements, it's subject to the transit passage concept, a concept. And we could read, I have a link for that. Again, go to Wikipedia, get all this yourself, just to get the basic background. And the point about this is try to read for whether or not EU could possibly have, because they don't have it as a sovereign, they're a veneer of an authority. They're like the UN relative to Europe. Remember, Europe is sitting underneath that. They don't have the oil. They don't have the, the, the they might have sanctions against them relative to the United States, but Iran and, and uh, Syria do not, do they? In fact, because of the sanctions, they're made different, aren't they? They're made outliers, outlaw to that system, aren't they? And so I'm still questioning this reasonableness. This is, I'll just tell you up front because I'm, I mean, this is we're going to get to there. There is a false claim of reasonableness. And the other problem with that is you didn't see the UN nations saying, wait a minute now, you can't do that. No, you see the political infighting that goes on. But let me get back to the to the analysis. That it says within the Gibraltar and the information available that you go through the concept of transit passage. Transit passage is different than innocent passage or freedom of freedom of, um, uh, of navigation. All right, these all these little terms. They all have their thing. You got to keep them straight. Uh, and I can't go through all of it here. Uh, and but there is a provision. And it's underneath the United Nations Convention of Law of the Sea. It's a newer imposition, but it's agreed to. Let me get to the point, I guess, of this, because I can't, I just can't go through all this stuff. In this rule, you, when you say you're passing through the, the transit passage concept, you have to, you agree by its assertion, you're giving authority over the territorial waters to the, to the territorial state that you are a pertinent to. However, they have to then give you the passage unless you fall under the exceptions. And I'll let you go to the link and you go read the exceptions. And you make up your mind whether or not an Iranian ship with Iranian oil owned by the Iranians and going to Syria all outside the EU gave EU probable cause for sanctions on them to impose those t sanctions. Go read for the instru whether or not that, that, that ship could be, do that oil tanker could be doing that. You also understand that some of these are, uh, allow docking. So you got to look at that. They didn't do any of that. They didn't have any intention to do that. They didn't even run into trouble. They were simply, well, they say detained. That was an arrest, folks. And likely, I, I was suspect it might have, maybe they didn't, but I suspect it was done by a cruiser as well. 
Again, your admiralty on the highway and navigable waters will correlate to the terms used. Remember the terms. The terms used on the roadways and the land. And you should find interest in that correlation. I certainly did. And why I can go through when I realize that. And even if I put it in the context of man of war. See, the sailors are not men. It's the ship that's a man of war. And I tell you, you're dealing with a military who runs cruisers. Should start putting some correlations. I'm not saying that they are. I'm saying leave them as the possibility and probability. And when you do, and you think that all the elements are such that you're looking at one of these things, you, you can start addressing that that way. You don't say it is. You just address it and talk in long-form elements. Uh, the elements of the condition don't use the words. Otherwise, they think you're nuts. Because if they find out you know, they're going to shut you up. And then you get shot. And that's the other thing. You get taken down. This, this traitor wasn't detained. It was arrested. And likely by a cruiser. A police cruiser, I no doubt. And remember, you got to go back into those laws back in the in the times, 1500s, 1600s, whatever these things are going on, and you see what they appur uh, they're pertinent to. It's fascinating, the consistency that got crawled up. Talk about evolution of a creature. It crawls out of the muck of the ocean, the mercantile of the ocean, and it puts itself on land. What was prized in the ocean becomes booty on the land for all y'all that make it like looking for jokes. Yeah, pretty interesting. So, we're supposed to go by the law of the sea for a transit. That's what that's understood. But there's two other ones that are mentioned, and we move along the line on other concepts. They're all concepts of transit. How do you get by, go from one place to the next? This one's in maritime, though, uh, and it's called the freedom of navigation. There's a whole thing about freedom of navigation. It also has to do now in a military sense, which is even more important to understand how they do this that what the rights are relative to a state, when they kick in and when they don't, what you're acknowledging when you focus on that as opposed to transit, because you'll see how this dynamic works, where, where like in Russia would, would not agree to the transit passage concept. They stuck with, and I think Spain also, they, so it's not just Russia, they stuck with a, a freedom of navigation principle because that's a different thing during uh, for, against military uh, and, and rights. And so they, there's reasons why they do this and why they hold fast. Doesn't mean that it's uh, generally recognized, but that's what a sovereign will hold to. And you'll watch even the United States doesn't work a lot of times through their agreements and, uh, of this, only with the treaties that exist. And it talks about all this, and even on the wiki pages. It's pretty cool. You can go through and get an idea, but you've got to be into this concepting. And I'm saying keep it open, your mind open about what the terms they're using and relating to where you are in your life on land. And you'll, again, like I said, you'll start to understand why the penal statutes of a state look like they were pulled right out of copy and paste, right out of a Benedict's on Admiralty. Now, be careful. You start fueling in that you're under Admiralty. You may or may not. It all depends on what you're facing and how. Now, these things are also potential defenses with other names. But here's the next one, is innocent passage, is another concept of the law of the sea that allows a vessel to pass through the territorial waters of another state, subject to certain restrictions. Now, isn't that just like the law, your uh, motor vehicle's code? <laughs> it just cracks me up. I can't help it. I'm sorry. It just cracks me up. It's so connected. So, at rate, you go through and look at this and, and, and do, the, do your... Do your uh, your correlations. Understand you have these three types of passages that the sovereigns will look at or not look at. Look at them inside the context of who you might be, not necessarily in the water. Uh, innocent passage is a concept subject to certain restrictions. Now I want you to go read those restrictions and apply that to that I Iranian, uh, Iranian uh, tanker. And you tell me whether or not the EU relative to sanctions on it could impose that and steal, have Britain steal that that tanker. And to me, it didn't make sense to begin with. I didn't think they had reasonable cause. That's a fraud. Uh, that's a felony in, under international law. What do you do? That's like war. That's war stuff now. Now you really did do it. But see, we're dealing in uh, no, lawlessness. The United States is probably supporting that. They don't, there is no international law, remember? There are none of these concepts. They're going to do what they do. It's called executive expedience. They're going to do what they do. And they've got a bunch of gang uh, members that are going to get together to pull it off. But I wanted us to look at this and say, 
Well, a so if you want to be, I'm talking to you now, folks, the listeners, you want to be a so-called sovereign, you want to have a power, and you want to deal with another sovereign on private contract, you're looking at the biggest nations in the world that's going to deny that to you. And so for those of you that think you have a constitutional republic that's been kept, uh, please, step back, rethink. And then, now what do you do? Because if you insist that you are going to do that, because that's where this place was wired to do, and it's not done that way, you're going to have to undo the wiring that was redone wrong and make it so. You can't just let these people do this. Okay, so I also got a conversation here. You go on in these words. A cruiser is a fast ship used by the Navy. It's also an American an English or an English a an American and English is a police car. The cruiser, right? Didn't they have the what? The Dodge Interceptor. You'll, you'll find that's a word as well when you get to like man of war. These are terms. Man of war. You're not the sailors. Those are those are appurtenances to the ship, right? This is not about you. This is about what's been set up before you got here. Now, you want to talk about the man, this is what they're talking about. It's a man of war. Are you a man of war or a man of peace? So when you say you're a man of peace, you're speaking right within the admiralty as well, but you can't just make the claim. You have to prove it. And so then there's the other concept that I'm not going to give you. You have to go find this out. Of the neutral, relative to this military look, a category and possibility. Historical review is another link. Historical review of cruiser characteristic roles and missions. And go look at the missions of a cruiser. Adapted to the road, the police and the cruiser, the interceptor that you were uh, that we knew about when we were younger, the Dodge Interceptor monster that they put on the highway to track you down for whatever what. You'll notice, read the subject matter areas that they have jurisdiction over. Look at what they don't have jurisdiction over and understand that's the deal. That's where you're going to be looking as an avoidance and or to say they don't have the power. Okay? Because what are they doing? They're cruising, right? They use those cruisers to do what? Gather intel, do arrests, and all this other stuff. The police use license plate grid readers to grid an entire neighborhood if you don't think you're being surveilled utilizing these license readers. They're now doing it with cameras and, and, and everything and laying out how the enemy combatants in a certain area are going through and about uh, doing uh, their work to subvert the organized government. So I can read this stuff, but I can the law enforcement, these cruisers are using uh, these, these admiralty cruisers looking around for contraband and people in merchant ships that are uh, susceptible underneath the freedom of navigation, but not underneath uh, the uh, tra transit passage conversation. Uh, the law enforcement using the license plate readers to grid the entire neighborhood. What does a gridding mean? And they explain in this article, the part of the training of the AALPR systems, Chandler police officers are taught to grid neighborhoods, grid, in quotes, grid neighborhood during their downtime. When they got nothing else, when they're not harassing you in other ways, they're supposed to drive around, cruise around, gather intel, just like a cruiser of old. That's always fascinating me, the correlation here. Systematically driving up and down every street in the, re in the area, indiscriminately scooping up information on vehicles. Well, what's the importance of this? Well, this is a surveillance zone system and the grid system, and then they can find out where you've been, and they promote it as being able to They tell their officers, this is how we can help stop crime in the future, by knowing where people were in the past. But we know they use uh, this this situation in order to do what? They make stuff up. They don't know what you're there and anywhere for. And they're willing, like we see the very first uh, article about the, having the guy having to go through all this hassle to try and get justice, like my friend's going to have to do as a victim of the, the work that I do by accident, where the enforcers want to beat down on somebody or anything for any reason that sounds like the idea of the day. In this case, don't don't let any fire start. They didn't know that he had the right to do what he was doing until after he told them it was not defensible. The same way here. They just impose upon you what they want to get out. And if they have a real bad attitude, they will. They have a system worked out to, to make that stick unless you're that one guy or gal. I don't wish any of this on any of you, but this is the reality we live under. These cruisers go out and get intel. You'll see the historical use of cruisers doesn't sound much different than a cop on the street 
as it did in the it does in the, it does now. It's a, consistent with the Admiralty and what happens during times of war. I guess I guess we can say that it's all indicative that you live in a military consequence. And so all y'all that thing that the, say that the, the Constitution is what ought, we ought to follow, you're, you've missed it. You've missed it at least twice removed. At least twice removed. And then it kind of diffused out. I don't know if it's twice removed, but more diffuse on the av avenues of, of the destruction of the organic establishment. And then we hear a little bit of what seems to be <laughs> cop standing up. Getting beat down by his own, apparently, or some or an agency, a jurisdictional uh, competition. Detroit cop arrests their own police commissioner at a heated meeting over facial recognition. Now I don't know if this is a setup story or what, but I know there was a certain way for this guy to have to do something uh, relative to how this agency board meeting exclusive uh, uh, private private meeting stuff that he was arguing. They, they made this a closed meeting. It's a secret meeting behind closed doors type stuff. They've given the uh, organizations the ability to do this. They're like business meetings and executive meetings and all this other stuff. This should have told you something else as well. And most people don't pay attention. So this commissioner, Willie Burton, steps up and doesn't want, like the idea that it's a private uh, closed hearing. He wants it open. Uh, the, the board uh, that they're listening to to bring facial recognition in uh, doesn't want to hear about it. The guy puts his office on the line, but he didn't. I mean, he says, if you're going to stop my office and you've stopped everybody that I work for, you have to arrest us all. Well, that's not actually how that works. So we have a little bit, I, I understand that the guy's commendable, but how he's approaching this caused questions for me. There's another way to approach it with being in his capacity that he'd ha he really should have followed a little differently, uh, given he, that's what he wants to do and not make a... Go down, do the wrong precedent, I guess is the thing I want to say. But So you have a, maybe a, co a, a commissioner cop that doesn't want facial recognition. What did I say? You're going to have to make rules that eliminate it. They're bringing in this stuff of surveillance. If it's not going to be in the cruisers, it's going to be where you cruise, where you go around, right? It's going to be where, where everywhere that you have to go, the things that you need is going to be a vulnerability that gives data to them, uh, probably to a private company as well that then gets resold as well, you don't know where that goes either, to fabricate and make up stuff just like you see the nations doing against Iran and Syria relative to their own sovereign properties. Not even in a sanctionable, they're not in the sanction stream. They are being sanctioned. Now, if that doesn't sound like you in the streets, I, I don't know what to say. I'm uh, Really, I don't know what to say. It's right here, the examples of how it ain't working, and I'm bringing those to you and asking us to step up in ways that are going to start to counter all of this. I, um, we, it's not quite the same, you know, Syria and Iran aren't going to go to war with those nations, but you can kind of go to war locally in a way that I've been telling you about the record that puts the heat on these people, and enough of you start coming, I think you you become the overwhelming mass. Like, oh, we got run over by stupidity. You become the actual, you become the right law enforced against the oppression against you. Thank you very much, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. I hope something I said to you all uh, inspires you a bit. Maybe lets you start to think about how to jump in, where to jump in, what to think about, how to look at the news and really get educated. You really can educate yourself. It's kind of neat that way. Uh, thank you, Jules, at what you, uh, for what you do at the simulcast. Uh, over there and at Sound Minds as well. Thank you for all the all your questions and things. I see I go that I don't know if I did it this week, but appreciate the simulcast there that you do. And uh, anybody else that can re repost the broadcast, I appreciate it. It helps to get the message out, helps to get people more in line with what I think has to come up with how they respond to this tyranny against them in a in a in a more rational, critical way that has a chance to succeed against those that don't want to hear it. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>